We return to Russia some 40 years after the Bolshevik Revolution. In 1956, the country found itself again in the midst of turmoil and upheaval. That's the focus of Judy Woodruff's latest addition to the NewsHour Bookshelf. The year began with Nikita Khrushchev denouncing Stalin himself, leading to anti-communist uprisings throughout Eastern Europe and raising hopes within Russia. Veteran foreign affairs reporter Marvin Kalb was a young diplomatic attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and had a front row seat in a tumultuous year that foreshadowed the breakup of the Soviet Union some 30 years later. He's written a book about that time, The Year I Was Peter the Great, 1956, Khrushchev, Stalin's ghost, and a young American in Russia. And Marvin Kalb joins me now. Welcome Hi, to the News you. Hour. <laughs> thank you. So this is the story, as we say, of what happened at a crucial moment in Russian history, in the history of the Soviet Union. But it's also your first memoir after 15 books you've written. <laughs> we get a glimpse of who Marvin Kalb is. It was a fun book to write. I'd never done anything like that in my life. When you write about yourself, it's much more difficult than, as you know, writing about the world or an event. And in Russia at that time, everything was just so exciting. And for me, as a young American there, it was an eye-opening, intoxicating experience. I loved every day of it. And you had been at Harvard. You were studying yes. for your PhD. You already knew the Russian language. Yes. You were studying Russian history. This opportunity came along to put you right smack in the middle of this place that you'd been studying, and you were able to get to know some of the Russian people. I got to know the Russian people because one of the great advantages of being utterly unimportant at the embassy was that when I wanted to travel to different parts of the Soviet Union, which had up to that moment been closed to foreigners, the ambassador, the wonderful Charles Bolin, looked at me and he would say, what have I got to lose? So Marvin would go off to Central Asia, to Ukraine, to northern Russia, everywhere. And after an initial period of caution, the Russian people opened up, at least in my experience. And I had a wonderful time with them. I really was able to hear their problems and understand what was on their minds, in addition to having access to someone like Nikita Khrushchev. Well, and I want you to tell that story, but we should remind everybody this year was crucial in the history of the Soviet Union because a month or two after you arrived, Nikita Khrushchev surprises everybody and denounces Joseph Stalin, who had been a hero in their eyes, and everything changed, at least for a short time when you were there. It was a fantastic moment in modern Russian history. Up to that time, the Russian people had never experienced personal freedom, and the Russian people, for the first time in their history, had an opportunity to think for themselves and it was such a magnificent, fresh, wonderful thought for them and an experience for them that they began to think, wait a minute, maybe we can get freedom. And suddenly, young people, the future of Russia, they're denouncing the system itself. And that thought ran through Russia, then it spilled over the borders and went into Eastern Europe, and suddenly you had the Hungarian Revolution. And everything was closed up again. Uh, because Khrushchev decided just to crack down to end that. But in the meantime, you had the opportunity to meet Khrushchev oh, yes. himself, tell the story, because that's where the name Peter the Great comes from. It was the July 4th holiday. Ambassador Bolin was having a big event. Khrushchev decided to come with the entire Politburo. I happened to be one of four Americans in a woefully understaffed embassy who spoke Russian. So Ambassador Bolin said, Marvin, you want to look after Marshal Zhukov. That was sort of crazy in my mind because I had been a PFC in the United States Army. That was my top rank. And here I was responsible for dealing with a Soviet marshal. And he loved vodka. So I fed him vodka <laughs> and I drank water. It's a great story. <laughs> I drank water. And after about eight vodkas and waters, Khrushchev's beckoned to both of us to come on over. And Zhukov was a little tipsy. And he said to Khrushchev, Nikita Sergeyevich, I have finally found a young American who can drink like a Russian. Khrushchev loved that line. He looked up at me and he said, how tall are you? I said, I'm six centimeters shorter than Peter the Great. Well, he loved the line. 
It brought the house down. And from that time, even when I came back years later for CBS, he always remembered me as Peter the Great. It was a great asset. You had access uh, in a way that no other American journalist had. But Marvin, what did you learn about them as a people? What I think I learned more than anything else is how similar they are to us. I remember once being in a train with a young Azerbaijani woman, probably 22, 23, and we were traveling together, it just happened that way. And she was looking at me and she says, where are you from? I said, the United States. She said, I don't believe it. Why? Well, you speak Russian. I said, yes, but even an American can learn Russian. And there was an awkward five or 10 minutes when things were, uh, the Americans are very bad and this is very bad. And then when she felt she knew me and I felt I was getting to know her, everything sort of dropped and we were two people and we were sharing experiences and insights. And I found that to be the case with Russians, whether they lived in Central Asia or in the Caucasus or Ukraine, Northern Russia, they're people just as we, they really wanted peace. Remember that this was 11 years after the end of World War II. 30 million Russians have been killed in World War II, maybe more. And they all wanted peace and yet they felt maybe they weren't gonna get it. Maybe there'd be war. Well, it's so many telling stories. A it's wonderfully fun. written book. Uh, the year I was Peter the Great, <laughs> 1956. Khrushchev, Stalin's ghost, and a young American in Russia. Marvin Kalb, thank you. Thank you, much. Judy. Thank you.